If your organization manages their own virtual servers using VMware, you're going to love our new vCenter integration as part of Invigate Insight. Let me show you. Hi, Matt Barron, Product Specialist at Invigate. With Invigate Insight, you can view, query, and manage your virtual infrastructure along with all your other assets. Now, before we get started, you can always grab a trial instance of our software at try.invigate.com to follow along, and you should find a link in the description. Invigate Insight makes discovering and managing your virtual assets with our latest VMware Discovery integration easier than ever. We are always adding asset types like this and plan to also add the Hyper-V integration. Let me show you what our VMware integration has to offer and what it can do for you. First of all, to set up this integration, you will go into settings and then to network and then to discovery sources. So VMware does require that a proxy be installed. I've got one set up here so you can just kind of see the settings. Uh, we've got a link to the documentation, which is going to show you specifically how to set up the discovery source. When you are ready to actually do that, you can go to add, choose VMware, hit add, and then you're going to populate those details that we've already got populated. Then once you've got it set up, you will start to see your V centers, your ESXIs and your virtual machines in your environment. Now to find my vCenter, I'm just typing in vCenter. Uh, I could hit enter and it's going to do a search and I've only got one vCenter. Um, but what's great is that you can track your virtual machines by asset type now. Once I've got my vCenter, I can go ahead and pop that thing open. We're going to look at all the details here. Starting at the top, we've got the asset status. This can be customized and changed for your specific needs. I don't see a lot of vCenters going in and out of <laughs> in and out of production. So uh, usually this is just set to active. I've got it set for our Atlanta location. That's where our data center is. And Pete Norton, he runs most of our virtual environment. So he's the owner. Great to have that information here on this asset. I can also subscribe to this vCenter if I care about what's happening to it or make some changes. Now we do get some basic details about vCenter here, what it's running, the IP address, you know, we don't need a lot of this information because it's just a vCenter server, but it is very useful information and it's nice to have it all in one spot. So for instance, I've got uh, some emergency contact information here. I've got a standard operating procedure attached to this asset. I've got a contract associated with it. It's part of my CMDB and I can see how many ESXIs are running on this vCenter. I've got five of them, four of them are online. And then for virtual machines, I've got 21 that roll up to this vCenter, uh, 10 of which are online, and I can click on view and explore to see those specific assets. But I did wanna show you these other tabs really quick because under resources, you can see a summary of your virtual infrastructure, all of our ESXIs and how much disk space they have remaining, very useful information, along with some data storage specifics over here. These are our, our specific drives. And then RAM over here is showing us how much RAM is being has been assigned to each of these ESXIs. And then CPU cores, which is very useful, of course, for managing licenses and making sure we don't get over that 25 core threshold. Now, the other tabs are gonna be things like contracts. So I should have my vSphere contract in here, uh, vCenter server license, I should say. Uh, if you've got an integration to another ticketing tool like Invigate Service Management, this will be under requests. Uh, and then activity is really useful for any changes that get made to this server. Of course, it's vCenter, so not a, lot of, not a lot of changes should be happening on your vCenter server. Now, when I go back home, let's take a look at the ESX view. So under the ESX eyes, I'm going to see, first of all, I can see the five right here. And this is kind of nice. It's a nice view to see you know, the, the data, the numbers, uh, if I don't like charts. But let's pop open uh, my first one here and we'll take a look at what we see. So right across the top, we've kind of got that same thing, uh, the location and owner, these should be assigned. In fact, I'm gonna update these really quick because this needs to be correct in here. And then down below these, I've got, um, a few more tabs actually on an ESXi. So we do give a general overview of the hardware here along with 
the uptime, fairly useful information for troubleshooting, uh, all of the network information, including multiple uh, NICs if you need it, the contract. So here's our vSphere contract that I was talking about. Uh, it's also part of a CMV entry. I've got some other docs over here, and this thing is running five virtual machines. Now, if I want to go upstream to my vCenter, I can just click here uh, or downstream to my virtual machines and see them here. But for now, I'm just going to show you the hardware tab because here you get more details about the specific hardware on this ESXi. What kind of um, chip is it actually running on? How much total RAM are we at? Here's those two NICs that I was talking about, because of course we've got redundancy built in. Very useful information. And if I go to the virtual machines tab, you see the specific VMs that are running on this ESXi. And these are also assets in Invigate Insight. So I can see right here the cores, the RAM, operating system, we've got three windows. Uh, Linux and a CentOS, and I can go to these machines and see the details about them as well. I see the contracts and activity just like I do on my other assets as well. And here in a virtual machine, you can kind of see it looks like a lot of other assets in Invigate Insight. The only difference is that the type is virtual. Now, I've mentioned a couple times the CMDB. Let's go there now. The CMDB is used to visualize how all these things are related together, sometimes to create services, sometimes just to visualize it. I've got one created called the VMware Virtual Infrastructure, and I can go there by clicking there, or it's under CMDB, and I can click here. And all this is doing is wrapping this all up into one. So it's showing me the total count of CIs, what kind of CIs they are. So I've got 21 virtual machines, five ESXIs, and a vCenter. They're all in safe condition, which is great. None of them are running out of space or out of memory or overused. No tickets against them, thank goodness. Uh, and then I don't have cost populated for my virtual machines, but I can see on this map how they're all related together. So over here, I've got my vCenter, these five ESXIs that all are managed by that vCenter. And then each of these ESXIs is hosting four or five virtual machines. Now, I've got relationships set up and they all say hosts, um, but you can see how other relationship types might be very useful. Um, if I take down this ESXi, I can see which VMs need to also come down and I can just kind of see the business impact. On this ESXi down here, number five, I'm doing an SAP backup server. So there's two backup servers for SAP. Now, I might create another CMDB or business application entry specific to SAP so that I can see not only how these fit into my virtual infrastructure like this, but also how those virtual servers fit into SAP as a service that I'm providing to the company and to my own colleagues. So hopefully you understand that CMDB maps can be used multiple different ways. The CIs can of course, be referencing services or they can be referencing their virtual infrastructure. You can also set up notifications based on the details of your virtual environment. Now we saw it earlier before, we saw that one of those CIs was healthy. What we can do is we can actually set up a notification so that if a VM is running out of space or an ESXi is running out of space, we can get an email notification. To set those up, I'll go into settings, assets and health. In here, I'm going to set what healthy means to my virtual infrastructure. So in this case, I've got a very simple rule set up that if the virtual machine specifically has disk space available lower than five gigs, I want them to set the health warning to warning. So the health, health status of these virtual machines should be set to warning. And then I also create an automation now, this automation is going to basically check that any time that an asset health status gets updated, it's going to check and it's going to say, is it a virtual machine? And if it is and the health status is not safe, then I'm going to send an email. And this email is going to go to the CI owner. So if it's a virtual machine, that person's going to get alerted. Hey, this virtual machine's only got five gigs left. You might want to give yourself some more room. And we're going to copy our virtual infrastructure manager, Peter, who's doing a great job managing our VM sitch. 
Then down below, we've got the subject and we've got some reference fields. So uh, you can add in whatever great language you want here, like hello. <laughs> and then you can add in these other data fields that are references to the specific alert. This will send out an email automatically whenever a virtual machine gets five gigs of data or less in its disk space. And this is just one aspect of Invigate Insight that's designed to make managing the complexity of IT assets simple. For more on this topic, subscribe to our YouTube channel or discover our solutions by signing up for a trial at try.invigate.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again soon.